You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Good morning, wherever and whenever you're listening to this. My name is Joyce Deriga. I'm the editor of the Chicago Catholic newspaper for the Archdiocese. This is Beyond the Headlines, where we take a closer look at the people making the news that we're covering in the um, latest issues of the Chicago Catholic. So today we have Clem Martin. He's president of Christ the King Jesuit College Prep Preparatory School over in the Austin neighborhood, and they just created this really cool innovation lab and maker space for the students. They took um, some space that was being underutilized um, and renovated it for this new innovation center to help prepare the students for um, the future of working in the out in the world. So welcome, Clem, to Beyond the Headlines. Good morning, Joyce. Thanks for having me this morning. You're welcome. So before we get into the innovation lab, I'm hoping you can explain to people um, Christ the King is part of the Chris Array network of schools. I, you know, I've said this to you several times. I, I love this model. Can you explain to people what just what it is? Sure. Um, one of the best things about the Chris Array model is it gives kids work experience. Um, in the Austin community, uh, two of the numbers that always jump out of you in terms of statistics are the unemployment rate and the, 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 the also the percentage of young men, especially 18 to 24, that aren't connected to the economy. And so the, the Chris Array model uh, brings kids in as 14 year olds and gives them corporate work experience over their four years uh, while at Christ the King. And it's a driving force behind how they fund their own education here at the school. But more importantly, it kind of gives them a bridge to opportunity uh, in downtown Chicago, up in Rosemont, in the Western suburbs, working for, for companies um, where kids have a future and kind of really shines a light on why they should go to school and continue their education. And so it's a great model just in terms of the exposure it provides for our students and the internship opportunities it creates for kids. And how many, it's what, two days a week they spend out in the field working? Um, five days a month. So one day a week and then one time a month the kids go out twice a week. And so um, like if our seniors work on Tuesdays and so every Tuesday morning they come here to school and depending on where their job is, we bring them downtown, um, out to Rosebond, Hyde Park, uh, River North, across the city at di different companies that support the program. And then once a month they go on Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays is a rotational day for our students. And so once a month uh, each group of students works an extra day that week. And it's for folks who might not know, it was founded here in Chicago by a Jesuit priest over in Pilsen, and that's where the original school is. We also have a Christo Ray Network school in Waukegan, and they're all over the country. It's it's a phenomenal um, program. They're always looking for, just a little pitch here, they're always looking for um, businesses that would um, sponsor their students for internships. So you can, if you Google Christ the King, uh, Chicago, you should be able to find it. There is a Christ the King Parish down on the south side, but this is Christ the King Jesuit School, Jesuit Preparatory Seminary. So it's preparatory school, I just said seminary, but it's not. So let's talk about this new innovation lab. Can you tell us what it was? And then you used the, the space that used to be, it was underutilized by a library, but you didn't get rid of all the books. It definitely didn't get rid of all the books. A lot of those books ended up in our classrooms, especially with our English teachers. And so um, years ago, like um, the, the library is kind of great as a gathering space for kids and a meeting space, but there was a lot of furniture in the library that took up a lot of space, um, especially like the, the circulation desk at the library was kind of significant in terms of size. And so when the pandemic hit, we were able to like had a pause in school operations for a bit. And it also gave us the time to reflect on you know, what's needed down the road for our students. So we took time and kind of met with our families, uh, our board members, our parent community, and kind of, and our, and our job partners and asked, you know, what skills do kids need to kind of really fill the needs of the economy moving forward? And a lot of them came back and talked to us about, um, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math, like those uh, STEM skills. And so when we looked at kind of the spaces we have and how we're using them, we looked at that library space and said, you know, what are what are ways we could kind of create and transform that space into something a little bit more practical and a little bit more useful for our students. 
And so we combined that with what used to be like an old desktop computer lab and we created an innovation center. And so it involves a lot of uh, movable furniture that allows for kind of group work, whole class work, um, the creation of ideas, meeting spaces, and allows for a significant amount of movement across that thing, uh, um, across, the, across the space. And then in the maker space, there's more of that uh, big workstation table, kind of um, almost looks like a giant butcher block table that kids can really make stuff, break stuff, create stuff. Um, and I think a big piece of education is, uh, is, is failure. You know, when you're building stuff and trying new things, uh, it creates that sense where you're allowed to do that and it gives, it gives kids that freedom. It's like, it looks like a workbench. And so you, you build things that may or may not work and then you learn from your mistakes and you, you try it again and do different things. And so in that space, we have 3D printers, laser cutters, um, and different kind of new creative machines uh, that the kids are able to use. And um, I don't want to say play with, but it's kind of like that shop for the 21st century where the kids are actually learning valuable computer and coding skills while also kind of um, having a little bit of fun uh, along the way. I think it's so neat. Why did, when you all came together to kind of look at the future and what, what needs um, you needed to meet, what were, what was the feedback? You, when we talked, you said that it was distinctly like that some of the donors and some of the parents were talking about the future of, of the jobs. What, what do they see and how do they, how do you all see having this new technology in this new space as meeting those needs? Sure. The um, One of the things, especially for our work study partners, in addition to our parents and students, was part of our work study program, the law firms used to be our biggest uh, employer for our students. And there was a ton of paper at law firms. So our kids could go work in the mailroom at kind of as their starting job. And they'd get to learn in the office because they'd go around and deliver mail to everybody. Um, and the, the pandemic accelerated uh, like kind of the demise of paper. Paper kind of went away more and more. And so uh, offices were saying, well, if kids are going to continue to add value, they're going to have to learn additional skills. And so kind of data input, learning to use Excel, um, kind of and just learning how to code, um, especially from our engineering firms. And there's different programs that go along with using the 3D printers. Uh, is that computer assisted design, the CAD programming and things like that specific that if the kids were able to learn these skills, they'd be able to bring those to work and add more values at the companies that they're working for as part of our corporate work study program. So the direct feedback we were hearing from them is here's an additional set of skills that uh, the kids are going to find valuable kind of going forward. And more and more that uh, like computer science is almost a language unto itself that mm -hmm. uh, for jobs of the future, regardless of kind of what field you're going to go in, into, having that, you know, good, strong kind of foundational knowledge in those areas is going to be beneficial to you, regardless of which career path you, you decide to follow. And so we thought adding the ability for kids to learn and practice those skills and creating a space to do that would add extreme values, not only for the companies that our kids work at, but for the kids' educational future and career prospects down the road. So how's it going so far? You've kind of had a like a soft rollout during the pandemic and you guys are starting to ramp up. How's it going? It's fun. Um, I, I think you see the progression. I think uh, originally like kind of we're using it as some classroom space and the kids are, the freshmen are taking their technology course in the space. And so they're just getting the foundational knowledge um, of kind of basic, how do you use a computer? Uh, the Microsoft Office suite, kind of how do you use those? How do you send professional email? All those different pieces that go with it. And then the fun pieces in there too that I haven't talked about yet is we have a sound studio that kind of is in between spaces and um, that creates a lot of energy and excitement. So going forward, like every Friday, we have time for the kids during their advisory time and um, kind of their homeroom time where they're allowed to use that space. And so there's a group of kids that are beginning to use that more and more and then after school as well. Um, in years past, we've had a big spoken word club. And so the creation of kind of music and spoken word um, and the mixing of music and things like that, the kids are very excited about. Um, and even as a career field down the road, kids have talked to us about that as well. And so that's a space that generates a lot of energy and enthusiasm. And then we have electives beginning next semester that are in the in the, the maker space itself, the, the, the room with the big butcher block and the, the 3D printers and all the different things that go in there. And so the kids will be learning those skills, learning how to code, how to program the machines, how to build different things using those things. And I think one of the first uh, things that they do is they create a set of measuring cups. Um, and it takes a lot more skill. It's a simple thing that you're, you know, you're taking a couple different shapes and having to put them together. And then the kids learn pretty fast if you try and build it 
um, right side up, it's not going to work. And then it, it kind of collapses in on itself. And then, then they have to realize they have to flip it. And so different things like that is part of the process of kind of learning and kind of learning through failure and growing through failure and kind of figuring out how to do things is an exciting piece of kind of using those spaces. And so they start with simple little projects like that. And then by the end, the kids um, are able to do a lot more uh, significant things. So I was joking around with one of the kids. I told them, oh, I want him, wanted him to build a CTK president bobblehead kind of using this. Yeah. <laughs> so he said he's willing to give it a shot. So. Yeah. That's pretty fun. When we talked to, um, when I did the story, I talked to some of the students and one of them, I'm pulling up the story, um, Tareen, who's a senior, he was particularly excited about the um, recording studio because he was talking about like a lot of his peers. Let me see. Um, he's talking about, he knows many students who want to take part in audio engineering and different STEM programs but they don't have the space outside of school where they have access to the equipment that they need to take on those kinds of things. It's just, so they, he was just super jazzed about it. And he said, he told me that he had already told a lot of people about the innovation lab and how, how, um, how they were blessed to have that kind of uh, technology and innovation at the school. So what, what kind of feedback are you hearing from the kids or, or maybe what, what do you see in the kids when they go in there and they're using the different space and, and learning the new things? I, I think you see the excitement on their faces, and I think that tells a story unto itself. Like Torian's a great kid. Um, he just for we just had our Advent prayer service, and he's part of that spoken word group that I talked about, kind of the poetry group. And so part of our um, Advent prayer service, he he delivered uh, a, a long poem, kind of reflecting on Advent um, at the end of it. And those are things that kids can work on in that um, sound studio. They can practice those things. They can kind of kind of record, hear themselves how they sound, and kind of. Uh, revise and edit and do different things to kind of see how they come out and do the different things. And he's one of the kids that's talking about um, learning a little bit more about audio engineering. We have actually one of our uh, uh, alums uh, from a graduating class a few years back. He's the one that's coming on Fridays because uh, he works in those spaces. Um, and he's teaching the kids how to use the equipment and kind of uh, develop their skill set and kind of how to become better and more proficient at using all the different tools in there. And so you see kind of some of our alumni already working in those areas and kind of coming back to share kind of what they're doing with the younger kids. And when they come back, um, like Ahmad was kind of saying, he's like, the kids don't realize you don't get this equipment at all these different places. It's like, um, and the fact that they're able to have it here at school um, and, and just another pathway to another opportunity. And I think that's one of the things we, we do at Christ the King. I think we have kids with a lot of talent, a lot of, uh, a lot of drive, a lot of energy, and it's our job just to open that door, crack it open um, and allow their curiosity to kind of take shape and kind of um, and let their energy and enthusiasm go to these positive things and kind of create pathways forward to bright futures for themselves. And it really is, amazing to see. I mean, most of the, if not all, are, these kids are the first, they're the first in their families to go to college, right? Like uh, Overwhelmingly. And I think that's one of the unique things about the Christa Ray model is, um, we, uh, we, although we have some of our parents who do um, have definitely have college in their past, most of our kids are first generation college kids. And we have an income threshold um, for the students we serve. So we serve exclusively low-income students at the Christa Ray schools here and in Pilsen and up in Waukegan. And as the kids that don't, just don't otherwise have access to a college prep education in a Catholic space and a faith-based environment. And so I think that's one of the unique things about the Christa Ray network is we're very um, intentional about the students that we're serving and we're trying to create pathways and opportunities for kids who wouldn't normally have those opportunities. And just as we'll go come back to the innovation space in a second, but or after we'll probably have to take a break here in a minute or two. But um, even in I remember you and I talked about this too. I remember when you opened and the the architecture of the building was a big consideration. And that I mean, it's just a beautiful building in Austin, which has many unfortunately has some rundown areas. So it's it's even kind of a light in the neighborhood, you know? Um, Without a doubt. And um, th this year we were part of Open House Chicago, which is uh, through, the, through the Chicago Architectural Center. And so um, a lot of people came by that uh, weren't from the community, kind of came into the building and see, saw the spaces. John Ronan's the architect and he continues to be involved with the school in a lot of different ways. And even as we kind of did this new project, he came out and uh, donated a lot of his services for this project so he could redo those spaces. And so he created this building with a lot of natural open light, um, beautiful spaces. And I think it helps to add 
um, and, and share with kids that they are valued, that they deserve something like this in this neighborhood, and that um, the education that they're able to get here and carry with them. I think the building reflects kind of um, how much we believe in our students. And so it's pretty neat to see in a lot of different ways. Um, and so I always invite people like to come out and see see the, the building and kind of, I think people are shocked when they drive down Jackson Boulevard and all of a sudden they come up um, and the building is very distinct in terms of how it looks and kind of the impression it creates on the neighborhood. And I think the architect did an incredible job um, designing the building where we're right up on the street um, and yeah. being very intentional and about saying we're part of the community. We're not separate from the community. There's big glass windows um, on that front part of the building. And so we're open and inviting to the neighborhood and say, come on in, um, be part of us. And so um, I think that's a really neat aspect of the architecture and how architecture can kind of shape a lot of different things and create mood and sentiment and feelings and things like that. I think the architect did a great job with our space um, and doing that and kind of creating a warm, welcoming environment for our students to learn in. So it's been great. And he's been great throughout the process. He helps uh, a couple of our kids go to IIT during the summers um, through their architectural programs. And yeah. so that the spaces that are created upstairs is like the sketch it and the coding and the CAD. The kids learn more about that in the architecture programs over the summer. So they get some foundational knowledge here and then they get to build on it in summer programming and, and decide if that's a career for them as they go into college. So great opportunity for the kids. Lots of great opportunities. Okay, we're going to take a quick break um, and then we'll be right back talking with Clem Martin. He's president of the Price of King Jesuit College Prep over in the Austin neighborhood about this really neat new innovation center that they put in their school. So we'll see you in a few minutes and don't go away. Catholic Charities 75th Annual Celebration of Giving is underway in support of those who are struggling to make ends meet every day. Individuals, families, colleagues, neighbors, parishioners, and friends purchase thousands of gifts and basic necessities to ensure Catholic Charities clients and their families have a joyful Christmas morning. There are many ways to get involved, including online wish lists that make giving easier than ever before. If you can join us in this special Chicago Christmas tradition as volunteers and donors, Please email us at cog at catholiccharities.net. That's cog at catholiccharities.net. Or call 312-655-7401 in Cook County and 847-782-4210 in Lake County. Thank you for helping us spread Christmas cheer this year throughout Cook and Lake Counties. Forty-four for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed. What? what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Catholic Charities has had the privilege of helping people in need in Cook and Lake County for more than 100 years. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our frontline workers who, despite the unprecedented challenges of the past two years, continue to excel at their jobs every day. From the warehouse staff members who pack boxes of nutritious foods for low-income seniors, to the dedicated WIC employees who have remained open for families with children under the age of five, to our volunteers and restaurant partners who ensure that meals are available for those experiencing hunger. To our service coordinators and our professional counselors who continue their vital work in innovative ways. To our food pantry staff and to all those who work at Catholic Charities Call Center, finding solutions for every person who reaches out to us for help. Charity is at the heart of all you do and we salute you.
Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce DeRiga. I'm editor of the Chicago Catholic. And before we go back to our guests, I want to give a quick shout out to the newspaper. You can find us at chicagocatholic.com and you can subscribe to us for $30 a year. We come out about every two weeks. You can do that also at chicagocatholic.com. You can follow us on social media. And we also have a free newsletter that we send out about three times a week. Some of the stuff that's in the latest issue um, includes Cardinal Supic had recently celebrated a mass to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the implementation of the Charter for Protection of Youth, Children and Youth, and um, ch Children and Young People, I'm sorry, through the USCCB. That's all those protections that are in place to train um, students, kids, everybody in our religious ed program, everybody in our schools about how to identify abuse. It also screens volunteers, trains the volunteers in the same thing. It um, supports our Office of Assistance Ministry and things of the like. We also have a fun story about St. Patrick High School now has a therapy dog named Patrick. So he comes once a week and roams the hall between the periods and hangs out with the boys in the study hall and just a fun kind of thing that's going on there. And then uh, in our upcoming issue, we've got stuff coming up on Christmas. We also have a story about St. Catherine St. Lucy School, which is right, is nearby to um, CDK, which we're talking about today, where they had some alumni donate $340,000 for scholarships in honor of a now deceased gym teacher and coach who was really instrumental in, in their formation. So Let's talk, get back to talking to Clint Martin. He's president of Christ the King Jesuit Preparatory School over in Austin. And they just put in this new innovation lab that also includes a maker space, which has 3D printers, a production studio, and all kinds of things to help prepare the students for the future of work as they go out and um, beyond college and graduation and such. So thanks for being here again, Clem. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, it also, the innovation space also includes space for counseling, and that's a big thing for um, CTK and the students. Can you talk a little bit about, about that and why? Sure. I, I think um, w one of the foundational pieces of the education you get at Christ the King is we care for the whole person. And so in addition to the academic program we have, you know, we, we have a, like our campus ministry and a lot of the kids we notice um, that come to us need a little extra help with kind of the social emotional well-being and health. Um, the Austin neighborhood uh, has a high violence uh, incident rate and kind of so a lot of our kids have exposure to trauma um, before they get to us and even while they're they're here in high school. Um, and so I think it's important to be able to give the kids uh, the skills they need uh, to develop healthy uh, mental health and well-being. And our counseling staff does an incredible job supporting our students in a lot of different ways. I think high school is uh, a time kind of where you're, you're growing um, in a lot of different ways and you're becoming an adult. And I think uh, teaching our kids good, good, strong uh, health and well-being kind of class, uh, we do that in classes as well as our counseling program. But our, we have incredible counselors who do a good job supporting our kids um, to meet all their different needs. Um, we do surveys uh, of our parent community um, as the year starts each year to kind of find out uh, both from them and our students kind of what are the needs and challenges they're facing right now. And then we plan um, a curriculum around that throughout the year. And so we do uh, during our homeroom we, advisory time, we kind of push in and do special uh, things on good relationships um, and kind of uh, just a variety of different topics that the kids bring up as important to them and families bring up that are important to them um, throughout the year. And so we do a lot of different things. And then the, the additional space we created just provides a great room to be able to have those conversations with kids um, for only individual conversations and, and group counseling as well. We do some group counseling around loss and uh, anger management and a, a variety of other topics. And we can also use those spaces to do restorative conversations with students um, and peace circles and different things like that. So when conflict does arise, as it does within any, any high school, we're able to have very productive conversations with kids um, about how to heal and kind of move forward um, and kind of uh, just develop healthy habits in a lot of different ways. But as I mentioned numerous times, we have an incredible counseling staff that really care and uh, help to nurture our children in a lot of different ways. So we're very grateful for them here at Christ the King. We've, in, in kind of our work, we've been hearing more about um, schools tuning into the mental health aspect of the student's life. And I think the pandemic seems to have kind of shown a light on, shined a light on the whole um, 
situation to as an as an educator and an administrator why does it matter like why why should we be concerned about the students mental well-being I think having well-adjusted kids that leads to well-adjusted uh, adults. Um, and I think teaching healthy habits when they're younger, how to teach uh, kids to cope with um, failure and loss and um, different challenges they're having um, in, in, in areas that they need growth. I think it's very helpful to, to have. Um, I think the, the pandemic and some of the isolation that it caused, um, some of the some of our students come from challenging circumstances um, as it is, and then kind of being um, from community and kind of a lot of the support you've had added additional stress and additional trauma for our kids. And so I think it's important um, and able for them to meet their academic challenges. They have to be, you know, kind of um, just emotionally healthy in order to kind of uh, be able to move forward in a lot of different ways. And so I, I think it's um, important not to underestimate the need for uh, strong health and uh, mental well-being. And we also do a lot more around physical well-being um, lately as well. And I think that leads to better mental health. And so we've expanded our um, programs. We have Gladiator Fitness Club that's open to all students. And we do that a couple times after school. Um, we do yoga um, kind of with teachers and yeah, with yeah. students. And so one of our teachers offers that um, after school for the adults in the building. Um, and we've tried to include parents in these uh, conversations as well. Kind of um, as as with some of the challenges that they have, kind of um, with their kids, we've had some parent meetings and different things like that um, over the course of the last couple of years that are very beneficial, I think, to everybody in our community. That's amazing. Yeah. Can you talk about some of your success stories, like the kids who've graduated and gone through this model and where they've really bloomed and maybe come back and help out? Like you said, there's a um, an alum who's coming back to help teach about the um, production studio. Yeah, I, I think um, I joked around in one of my speeches a few years ago, uh, using the Christmas Carol, it's the most wonderful time of year. And I think um, one of the neat pieces about this time of year for me, um, having been here 10 years, is a lot of our kids come back during this time, kind of right before the holidays, uh, to see their teachers, especially the kids that are off in college doing well. Um, and they kind of come back and they talk to the teachers and talk about assignments like, hey, you taught us how to do this, and this is how it's paying off for me in college. This is how I'm glad you were tough on me and kind of really pushed me to, to develop my writing skills here because it's helped me in these different ways. And I think some of the success stories here, and I think down the road, or we eventually want the kids we have going through uh, the hallways now to kind of be the ones running the school, um, you know, five, 10 years, 15 years down the road. And I think we have uh, a few alums uh, from previous classes that are working in our work study office um, and doing different things here at our school. Our director of admissions is from the Cristo Rey School in Pilsen. Um, and so you see how the model works where kids go through get an education. And then we have a lot of kids working at our companies um, as well. They, they did internships at different places. Uh, we just had our 10 year reunion for the class of 2012. And one of the one of the women in that class, her first job here at Christ the King was working at Advocate Good Samaritan Hospital. And now she's a supervisor, a nursing supervisor at um, one of the Advocate Hospitals. And so you see kind of that starting point as a 14 year old. And then you see somebody wow. kind of, uh, much further down the road, kind of in their late 20s, early 30s. And they're kind of running, starting to run things. And so my hope as an administrator is that one of our kids down the road will take my job, um, kind of, and I think that's where you see the su success of our, our building and our story is our kids, you know, developing great academic uh, and work ethic skills. So whether they go to college and onto careers or if they're entering the workforce, they kind of um, take all that they've learned here at Christ the King uh, and, and kind of uh, being a benefit to our community and our city. That's pretty awesome. So am I missing anything on the Innovation Lab that we didn't talk about? Yeah, I, I think um, I think you got it. I think we have like all the new spaces, and I think the flexibility allows for a lot more um, uh, different things as well. Like the the innovation center and that flexible furniture, we have our board meetings in there, student clubs and activities meeting there after school. Um, it's used for the academic center for tutoring, and so you can structure that room in so many different ways with the movable uh, whiteboards. You can create small nooks of students. You can do big uh, presentations with larger groups of parents in the community. And so it's just an incredible space and it gets used um, all the time. So whenever you're in the building, you kind of see people in that space and using it in a lot of productive different ways. And I think the, the real results are gonna come in the next couple of years as we're able to further build out programming for the spaces. Um, like I would mentioned robotics and things like that, that the kids do as an after school activity. So there's just lots of things planned in those spaces. And it's really great to see how engaged students are 
and kind of excited to learn in those spaces. And, and I think it's just, just as you mentioned before with our building, I think the, the spaces we create for our students help to kind of reinforce the fact that they are valued um, and have a lot of gifts that need to be kind of supported uh, so they can be successful down, down the road in life. You know, and when I was doing the two the interviews for this story, you know, we've we've talked to um, students at the Cristo Rey schools in the past, and I'm always struck with struck by the grasp they have on just how blessed they are to be able to have this opportunity because they they're coming from these communities where they see the disparities, right? They they're maybe like in in the city, they they have friends that go to CPS schools that don't, you know don't have nearly this capacity or the staffing for maybe STEM program and stuff. And, and they appreciate the, um, the opportunities that they're getting. The other, um, the young woman I interviewed, let's let me get her name, Kaylin. Yeah. yeah, she's, you know, she was talking about how she wants to go into architectural and architecture um, media and stuff. And she's working in an architectural firm right now. Like, who gets that kind of experience in high school? You know, I, I'm just so jealous. I told them both, I'm like, I am so jealous, especially from that, you know, in those production studio and those 3D printers. I mean, the opportunities that they're um, that they're being offered. And even like Tareen was talking about, when you mentioned about um, the alumni who come back, and he was saying about how the teachers, you use kind of more of a college the college prep model where you're the way you grade the way the expectations the syllabus and that are really preparing kids to go into the future and he said that they the teachers explain here's why i'm doing this you know i think for a lot of our kids that why and really understanding something um i think a lot of our kids even with the work study program we take kids who are 14 um and kind of our median family income for our, our parents is about $28,000 for a family of five. And so, um, you know, kind of the whole idea of the difference between a job and a career is something our kids learn over the four years. And so by the time they're seniors, kids like Tori and Kaylin kind of really have an understanding that not everybody has these opportunities. And it's really setting up a foundation uh, for future success for them and their classmates. So it's great to see. Awesome. Okay, we have to wrap it up. And I appreciate you being here, Clem. Um, again, we're talking to Clem Martin, who's president of Christ the King Jesuit College Prep Preparatory School over in the Austin neighborhood about this new technology they have. And um, my name is Joyce Dorega. I'm the editor of the Chicago Catholic. Please go to chicagocatholic.com and check us out and subscribe. And um, until next time, have a gentle and joy-filled day. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye, Clemson.